Hi there, Lori here, and I am here today to show you how to merge in different ways more than one photo together in order to combine and get the look that you want when you don't have one perfect photo. I'm going to be working with these two pictures. I'll just bring them over, and here's the top one. So you can see that this little guy, these are two of my grandsons, he's a little bit blurry and his face isn't bad, but when we bring it up here, he's sharper and a cute face, but now look at this face over here. So I want to combine these so that I've got these two faces and not this, not this face as much as I love it. So the easiest way is while both of your photos are lined up, and since I was doing these as selfies and they're pretty much lined up exactly right the way they are, I'm going to have on the top this one with this perfect face. And what I'm going to do is get rid of these two faces. So it's highlighted. I will go to cut straight and blended edge. And I'm going to just not have too much of a blend going on, just a little bit. And I'm going to bring it up just enough so that I get rid of all of my face. And then this shoulder should be exactly the same in both pictures. And the hope would be that where his head is up here is exactly the same in both pictures. So I am going to say keep the unshaded area over here. This is the unshaded area and cut. And when I do that, I now have this line that you can't really identify, but I like to be cautious. I'm going to zoom it up considerably and take a good look at where the edges are to make sure that he doesn't have two ears or his hairline isn't in the wrong place, anything weird like that. Now if I want to see it better, I can come over to the elements panel and I can make that top picture invisible and then bring it back up so that I can see the differences. So right here you can tell slightly that this part of my shirt wasn't in the exact same place with his hair each time. So now it would just be a matter of if I want to play with that a little bit. So highlighted on that top picture, and I am in Artisan 5, I'm going to go to Touch Up, Erase. I will make the diameter of this the size that I want it to be. And then I can just clean it up slightly if I feel that would help. Now you can see from what I'm doing, if I do this, you can see now how much his head was in a different position. And you really couldn't tell that before when I left it this way. So I'm really just going to touch up the tiny little edge, just like that. Now, because my shirt, the edge of the shirt, is coming into his hair a little bit, I'd like to fix that a little bit better. I'm going to highlight both of the photos. I'm going to say Arrange and Flatten. Now I'll go to Touch Up, and I will Clone. I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger. And it appears that it's acting a little bit strange. So I'm going to zoom further because I really want to see this area well. And then a lot of times I make the pattern a little bit softer at the edge so that it won't be as sharp. And at this point I'm going to select someplace close by and I will just clean that area up a little bit. Now you can see that it wasn't quite um, perfect the way it was. I do love the undo button. So if that happens and I need to change it a bit, and I'm going to change the opacity of this, 
then I can certainly do that. When I come back and I pick a point, I have to hold my shift key to give it a new point, and I'm just going to clean that edge up just that tiny little bit, and it really won't be noticeable when I um, zoom it up. Now, the gray area, I want to fix that also of my shirt, so I'm using the shift key again, and now I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit better. I'll OK, and I will go back to a normal view, and remember we've um, merged these together. So at this point, I want to save this picture, this picture that I fixed and I did a few things to. So I can right mouse, I can say Save Selection, export to an image file, and I'm going to go right to the folder that I've got these pictures in. So I keep them in photos. Here's my 2016. Here is September, and then the um, 18th of September. And I could leave it as a ping file, or I could save it as a JPEG file. Pings actually save the resolution better, so sometimes I do save as a ping file, but this time I'll just save as a JPEG. And I will put me and the boys. Now keep in mind, all of the rest of these have a number. So the one that is me and the boys, if I now go into this folder, if I scroll to the bottom, I can see that one. So it's not up with the rest of them, I can see this. And now, if I go ahead and put these in Historian, I can make a choice that maybe I don't want all of these that weren't as good, and I could just save the one that I fixed if I want to. Or I could save them all and maybe just put five stars on that one that I fixed. So there are a few other ways to do this. I really like just cutting when it's a big area like that that I could do. But let me move that picture over, and I'm going to bring these two photos back in and just show you one other thing briefly. So his face here, and then if I hide that one, and his face there, I could conceivably say, here I like these two faces, and I just want to replace this face with the other, right, with this face. So I could take, I want to make sure that I'm selected just on that top one. I could do a cut or a shape. Um, there are several different ways to do it. I'm just going to do a quick cut, and I could just cut inside. And I'm not going to get too particular. And I will say keep the shaded area because that's what I want to keep is his face. And I'll cut. And now there's his face. And what I would do from here is to move it around and try to get it about where I want it to be. Now, if I were able to get that relatively close, and this does work pretty well when you've got a group with a whole bunch of faces and everything has um, remained the same, you have a tripod set up and really not too much has changed. So if you do something like that, what I then do is I go to Filter and Edge, Soften Edge, and sometimes I do a fairly significant soften and that will help blend the two photos together. So let me zoom this up so that you can see it a little bit better. And if everything else is pretty well aligned, then you can usually tweak this just enough so that it looks pretty natural. And like I said, with, with just three people, it might not be as good a choice as the way that I did it, but it certainly is a possibility when you have a huge group photo and lots of little faces to replace. I think I switched out six faces on one of my group photos recently just by doing this. So hopefully that helps. Have fun with it. You can make much better photos, ones that you're happy with when you have uh, several of them and only one good face on each one.